Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord again. Today is a wonderful day. Our church is a unique church. It is a, a global church, and we have several programs for every department. Today is a special day for the women in this church. So in most, almost, I would say those who are able to do the program today, let's say we approximate maybe 90% of the churches worldwide will be having women standing in the pulpits to praise the Lord in this wonderful prayer day for women internationally. And for our viewers, we want to appreciate all the women who are standing in several pulpits today and participating through singing and through preaching and uplifting the Lord who has brought us this far. And in honor of this day, our international day, I want our ladies to stand up. Please stand up for a minute. And uh, I want to say a short prayer for, because uh, we have something which happened to us this year. We lost our general conference women's director just one month ago, Sister Ida Don Small. And I want to put a short prayer for her. Heavenly Father, we still continue praying for our, our leader's family. We lost our leader for the General Conference Women Ministries Department, Sister Ida Don Small. She's resting, awaiting for the resurrection morning. And as we are celebrating this day, we are celebrating without her. But we want to thank you because she made all the preparations of this day. Even for the program of this day, we want to thank you for the services that she did for you. I pray for all the women that you may remind us this day to serve you when we are still alive. We pray that that day we shall rejoice together and say, this far we have come. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, ladies, and uh, thank you for the great day that we are prepared. And uh, I want to appreciate the Women Ministries Leader for Nairobi Central Church, Sister Elizabeth Koros, for inviting me to come and speak to Central Church today. And our theme for the day is Ignite Your Prayer Life. When you talk about the word ignite, ignition, that means something is off. So there is something which is off and something must come to life. So when we talk about igniting our prayer life, it means that somewhere, somehow, something has gone wrong. And when we talk about something which has gone wrong, you must do something about it. That is why we are talking about today, ignite your prayer life. I want to believe that each one of us here has a way of prayer life. There is a way you are doing your prayer life as a Christian. There is a method you are using to keep your spirituality alive. And today we are not talking about corporate prayer. We are not talking about uh, congregational prayers. We are not talking about a gathering of family prayer. We are talking about your personal prayer life. And we are going to see why it is important to have an ignited prayer life. There is power in prayer. And when we are talking about igniting our prayer life, that means when we don't have prayer life, we are off. We are off the road. We are off the power that God wants us to have. I want to remember 33 years ago when I started my prayer life as a youth and I promised God I'll be doing up my 24 hours prayer every first of the month. And I want to tell you young, young ladies who are in this meeting or watching me, make use of the time when you are young. You can be a very powerful prayer warrior. I succeeded. Even when I was in the university, I used to go to the university parlor, worship parlor, and pray alone till morning. Then I got some pe few people who joined me to pray. 
And I did for four years when I was in Cambas. And to make it a story short, when I got married, I started doing and things started changing. After my first baby, I was keeping the day one. After the one, two, three, four babies, it was coming one every quarter. Prayer life. I realized that I had changed my prayer pattern. And I realized something was happening because I was looking for company to do my prayer life. Like I needed my spouse to join me for their prayer life. I realized things may not be the same. I came back and ignited my prayer life and said, my dear, I'll be praying for you. But on first, I'll be praying whole night, whole day for myself because I need the power of God. There is somewhere you realize that something has gone different and you must come up and start your prayer life again. So there is a time we lose our personal prayer life because we now grasp the, I think, the corporate prayer life. Especially in our families, when people are not willing to pray, you also give up. You say if people are not coming, everyone can be for themselves and God for us all. And some people are dragging to come for worship. We have to have corporate prayer life all the days in our families, in our churches. But there is something special when you have your personal prayer life. Praise the Lord. I have been a pastor for the last 30 years in this church. And I've realized less prayers and less power. More prayers and more power. We have no option. Whether you are in ministry or you are a mere church member, when you don't have a powerful prayer life, you are also powerless in your work. That is why our scripture today talks about power. Our scripture is talking about power. And it says, all power has been given unto you. All power which is this power that this Peter is talking about, that all power has been given unto you. Why do we need power? There's a reason why we need the power, and that's why God says all power has been given unto you. And this power which has been given unto us is divine power. It is not the power that is granted unto us. Like uh, usually when pastors, we are uh, not joining uh, the couples together, you say, by the powers granted me by the government and the church. This is not the power we are talking about because when you mess up, all those powers are taken away from you. I'm talking about the power which is divine. It says it's divine power as has everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through this, he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world caused by evil desires. Who gives us the power to have the prayer life? You may want to ignite the power once upon a time when I was young, I still love marathon. I used to run. I used to run. I used to race. I hope you are not checking my weight right now. I'm talking once upon a time. When things were serious, I used to race and I love marathon. But when you also check the marathon, even those who watch marathon, before they start, there is always a race which they run. And in that race, there is somebody who is carrying the torch and the first person goes and ignites the torches and those torches are the ones which gives light to the field and it gives power so that the athletes will feel the power. They feel jump-started. There is power in light. There is power in fire. There is power. And this is the power that we need because when your prayer life has gone down, it means you need something to jumpstart you up. And this power 
only comes from the owner of the power. By the way, when did you last pray for yourself? When did you last set yourself apart and have a time for prayer? But you may ask me, Pastor, why should I, why should I do that? Because the Lord already, already knows what I need, so why should I pray? And uh, that is what the devil has uh, put in our hearts most of the time, that he knows it all. No? God says we have to pray. Matthew eleven twenty eight says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. When we come at the feet of Jesus in prayer, this is where we lay our burdens. And the Lord says, come unto me, all you that are weary and heavy burdened. I want to believe that those who are watching and listening, each one of us have their own share of burdens in life. Some of us may have the burdens of sicknesses, financial burdens. I am telling you, it's not easy. Some of us may have family burdens. We may have challenges which are becoming very heavy on us. But God says when you come at the feet of Jesus, you lay down all your burdens. They become lighter. Prayer is the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. Know that it's necessary in order to make known to God what we are, but in order to enable us to receive him. Prayer does not bring God down to us, but it brings us up to him. Book step to Christ, page 8. It is necessary to pray. Prayer lifts up to God. It is necessary to have time for prayer. Did Jesus have a prayer life? Because as Christians, our desire is to be like Jesus. Our desire is to follow the footprints of Jesus. In the book of Matthew 14, 23, after he had dismissed them, the crowd, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone praying. Jesus had a personal prayer life. When he had finished with the multitude, he went aside to energize himself, to talk to his God for the mission that he had given him. He had time to rejuvenate himself, to reignite himself one again, because people can drain you off. Work can drain you out. Many things can drain you out. They suck you. They take away your strength. That is why when Jesus had dismissed the crowd, when you have dismissed your wife and children, your husband and children, you go aside alone and pray and ignite yourself for the Lord. The book of Luke chapter 6, verse 12. <clears throat> One of these days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray, and he spent the night praying to God. This was a savior. This was a divine. He was not human like us. He had his divine powers, but he realized the importance of prayer. And one of those days, he went out to the mountainside to pray, and he spent the night praying to God. He knew the secret and power of prayer. He knew why he was praying. In the book of Mark chapter 1, <clears throat> verse 35, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, he left the house, went off to a solitary place, and he prayed. Why was he praying anyway? He had the powers even to chase the demons. He had the powers to resurrect Lazarus. He had the powers to stay in the storm. You can calm down. But yet, he realized the importance of setting time apart for personal prayers. It is not very amazing. It is not very good to realize that as the children of God, because the devil has taken all our time and we don't have time for prayer, 
he has found us weak, he has found us alone, he has found us without strength, he has found us without protection, so he can do anything he wants with us. When we escape the hour of prayer, we escape the protection we need from God. We escape all the blessings that we need from God. And because this evil one knows the importance of prayer, he had made sure that in your life, you don't have time to pray. Even when we are going for work, you see people, can you pray fast? My Uber's just come, it's waiting. Pray faster. I mean, we are so much in a hurry, we don't have time to pray for ourselves. In the book of uh, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, you have the earth, but if the salt loses its saltness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Have you lost your saltiness for God? Have you lost your sweetness for God? Remember when you started your journey with God, how excited you were, how energized you were, how you had a lot of fire in you. That same book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 to 16 says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives the light. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. When we avoid the prayer time and we lose the light, instead of becoming the light, we become the darkness. Instead of attracting the people to God, we become the darkness. Just check in your house. In those houses, I think the modern houses may not be having the same issues. When you are using an ordinary bulb, you can see how all the insects want to come where the light is. Who doesn't want light? Especially these days when light goes off and you know your phone will go off and your laptops. People get so stressed because there is no light. There is importance of light. And that's why the Lord says, please accept the divine power that God has given us. I'm going back to the text. The text that we read uh, which is our key text. That is the importance of that text that I want. All divine power, all divine power has been given unto you. Peter is checking the foundation because he said, if the foundations are shaken, what will the righteous do? That means when we don't have the power which God has given us, our foundation has been shaken. We have to review our foundation. We have to review where something went wrong. In that book of 2 Peter 1, 3 to 4 says, What have we been given? It says, All things have been given unto us. All power for life and for godliness. There is nothing that the Lord has denied from us. Christ has used his divine power to give us all, even his gift of salvation. Where does this gift come from? In the book, that verse 3 and 4. The quality and significance of the gift largely is dependent on where the gift comes from. Peter identifies the source in two ways. How can I reignite my prayer life? How can I get this divine power? Peter identifies two ways. Number one, in that verse three, the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We get this divine power through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That means by reading the word of God, we get the fire back to us. That means our divine power can be restored when we read the word of God. <clears throat> the knowledge of the word of God brings grace and peace as well as salvation and a life of godliness. Regeneration, growth in holiness, comes from a saving knowledge of the one who has called us. When Christ is saying, I have invited you, 
It's not a mere invitation. It is an effectual call, a call that always produces the desired results. When Christ calls, it is results automatic. And in the book of John chapter 10, 27, it says, the sheep hear my voice and follow me. We are seeing that book of 2 Timothy, and it says, the promises from Christ, pray according to the promises. We have been made to be partakers of divine nature. So when we pray, we pray according to the promises of God, and we receive the gift of divine nature. I want to take you to the book of Leviticus, chapter 12, verse 12 and 13. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn good on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And he shall burn thereof the fat of the peace offerings. In the Old Testament, the priest was not supposed to put out fire at the altar. The fire was supposed to burn day and night so that wherever the children of Israel brought their offerings, the fire was ready to consume the offering. We cannot allow our lives to be out of the fire of God. <clears throat> fire is the evidence of being spiritually alive. When there is fire, you cannot be the same. If you have the fire that has been ignited in your prayer life, you cannot be the same. When there is fire, you cannot be normal. When there is fire, things cannot be normal. Fire changes everything. Once upon a time, someone's house was burning down. And in this house, he was hosting an auntie who was very sick, working with crutches in this house. And the house started burning down, and everybody was running out of the house. And they remember that somebody who was sick, maybe was not come out of the house. But let me tell you, when they realized outside, the first person who went out was the aunt with the crutches. When fire came, strength came, and she was the first one to come out. She even forgot the crutches in the house. When there is fire, things change. When you have fire, things cannot be normal. So God says there is importance of prayer. Ignite your prayer life. Ignite your prayer life because with prayer, things change. With prayer, God answers our prayers. We need to improve our prayer life. How should I pray? How can I have an ignited prayer life? Number one, pray according to God's word. Sometimes we have serious prayers, but the best way to have a good prayer life is to pray according to God's word and according to God's will. There are many, many ways that people pray but let us pray according to God's word. Number two, talk to God as a friend. Number three, write down your prayers. Number four, pray according to the scriptural promises. Number six, be inspired by the prayers of others. I get inspired by the prayer of others in the Bible. When you want to ignite your prayer life, you have to pray according to God's will. You write down your prayer. You pray according to the promises of God because in the Bible and in the text that we started with, according to the promises we are answered. In the book of First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10, talks about the prayer of Jabez. Jabez, the word Jabez, you know, our mothers have named us, or our fathers, names that they chose for themselves. When Jabez was named, the mothers had a reason. First Chronicles 4, 9 to 10. Jabez made sorrow, but his prayer shows that he desires the complete opposite of his life. Made sorrow, the meaning of Jabez. He pleased to God for a blessing. 
an enlarged territory for God's presence and for strength to keep him from evil so that he may not cause pain again to others. When the parents named him Jabez, made sorrowful, he said, I will pray. I'll pray against my name. He prayed against the name and said, God, change me so that I do not become a pain to the rest of the people as I became a pain to the parents. Pray for change of things that follow you from birth. Refuse them in Jesus' name and he will give you an answer to prayer. We are talking about getting inspired by other people's prayers. We look at the prayer of Anna in the temple. Anna was childless when she got the fire of prayer and she was in the temple. She prayed, God, remove my shame. If you give me a son, I will bring him back to the temple. Did God answer the prayer? Yes, he did. Prayer has several benefits. Prayer has several benefits and we get inspired by the prayers of others. The prayer of Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 20 verse 12, 2 Chronicles 20 12. Jehoshaphat was facing a great enemy and this, he was so fearful and he prayed for help. He had no idea what to do, so he set his eyes upon God and he wanted for deliverance. I want you to get one point from there. Jehoshaphat was facing a great enemy in that book of 2 Chronicles 20, 12, he was so fearful. He prayed for help. He had no idea what to do. He set his eyes upon God and he waited for deliverance. Even when you don't know what to do, just pray. Even when you don't have an answer, just pray. He prayed and he waited. He was fearful, but he prayed. In that same book, in verse 15, 2 Chronicles 20, 15, the Lord answered and said, Do not be dismayed. The battle is not yours. The battle is mine. And the prayer was answered. Even some of us, when we don't feel like, what do I pray for? I am so fearful. I am blank. Still pray and wait upon the Lord. He will come upon you. Hallelujah. We have to be inspired. Matthew 7, 7. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. It is our duty. We have a duty to play when God is answering our prayers. We knock, we ask, we seek. And when we avoid all this, we get ourselves helpless. When Abraham was praying for an offspring, it took so many years, but according to the promise, the prayer was answered. When Jacob's prayer for a blessing, God answered according to the blessing in Genesis 28, verse 20 to 22. That means it is our duty to pray and make the connection with God. I want to give a simple illustration which happened to my friend and I've said it somewhere else before. This friend, it was the year 2011. They were having a group of women and the women liked participating in buying items for one another. So this time it was about buying fridges. They bought a fridge for this lady. They went and they prayed for it and she installed the fridge. She had not used her fridge before and they told her how to pack the food in the fridge, and she packed everything in the fridge. And life was good. And the next day she went to school because she was a, a, a teacher. Uh, she had packed lunch, ready lunch. The next day she went with the food. It was smelling a bit. The third day she came complaining and said, oh, my fridge is not good. You bought for me a bad fridge, and this fridge cannot work, so can we return it? The friends went home and uh, they were trying to, to see why they were given a wrong fridge only to check that she had never plucked in the fridge. The plug was lying down and the food was full in the fridge. This is the life of a prayerless Christian. You can be packed with so many verses. You can be packed with so many activities. 
You can be packed with so many good things, but if you are not plugged to the power, the food will start rotting. And this is the secret of the devil. He will allow you to have your lesson. He will allow you to go for the choir. He will allow you to have for outreach. But if you are not plugged to the source of power, everything in your life starts rotting. There are so many benefits. There are so many benefits of prayer. And I pray that the devil does not deny us the benefits of prayer. Because with prayer, we have the power and the divine blessings that the Lord has given us. The first blessing of prayer is that prayer connects us with God. Prayer closes us to God. Prayer is what brings the fridge and the plug to the power. This fridge is packed, but there's a plug. If we don't plug it, everything gets rotten. Prayer closes us to God. And we have to be on our knees. We have to ignite our prayer life. Prayer is one of the most essential duties of every human being. Without prayer, you cannot maintain a Christian walk. Prayer elevates. Prayer strengthens. Prayer enables. It is a soul talking with God. The book of Aaron D. White, volume 2, page 313. Prayer has several benefits, and we realize that Prayer closes us to, draws us closer to God. Prayer en enables us to resist evil. Prayer enables us to resist what? Evil. In the book of 1 Peter 5, 8, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, is prodding around like a rolling lion, looking for someone to devour. In the book of Matthew 26, 41, Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Benefits of prayer, number one, we said, prayer connects us with God. Number two, prayer enables us to resist what? Temptation. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Set your minds on things above and not on earthly things, and you will live a spiritual life. Prayer, prayer, there's power in prayer. Prayer improves our mental health. Prayer improves our mental health. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Prayer is powerful. We cannot avoid prayer in our lives. Prayer increases thankfulness. Number four, prayer increases thankfulness. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Prayer, prayer increases our thanksgiving. When we don't pray, we we'll find ourselves complaining and very sad. In the book of Psalms 146, verse 1 to 2, Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord, O oh my soul! While I live, I will praise you. I will sing your praises to my God while I have my being. Hallelujah! When we pray, we get the strength. Rejoice always and continually rejoice because the Lord has given us the secret of prayer. This day, if you are passing through time of lawlessness in prayer. We read in our text that all divine power has been given unto you. In Luke 19.10, the Bible says, even I've given you power to tremble over scorpions and they will not hurt you. All divine power, all things have been given to you for holiness. All things, if you are missing anything for the holiness of life, for our spiritual holiness and for our power. The Lord has said, through my son Jesus Christ, all power, all divine things have been granted unto you. All you need is the secret of prayer. When you touch prayer, it is a password to your holiness. You touch prayer, it's a password to your answered prayer. 
Prayer is a password. You cannot open your phone without a password. You cannot go to your bank and withdraw your money without your password. Prayer is a password. We have to use this password because all divine blessings have been granted to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. May the Lord grant you this divine power. May the Lord rejuvenate you and give you power in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God in heaven, we pray that today you ignite our power of prayer, that you may put for in us the fire to pray. Give us the secret which has been lost. Give us the power which we have lost before, so that all that we ask according to our will has been granted to us. We shall overcome temptations because of prayer. We shall live a holy life because of prayer. We shall walk in the midst of fire because of prayer. We shall live in the lion's den because of prayer. And we shall be victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you and keep you.